Howdy and welcome back to the workshop. My name is Will Stelter. I'm a professional bladesmith. I've been doing it for 12 years now. I know it doesn't look like that's possible, but it's true. This right here is a Kiridashi and today we're gonna plate it in 24 karat gold. Today we're dropping a batch of Kiridashis and one person who purchases one will get the golden Kiridashi as well as the normal stainless one. So if you want a chance to win, go check out the dashis on the website. The Kiridashi is a traditional Japanese woodworker's knife. They have a single bevel ground on them so that you can get really nice and tight into tight corners. They are traditionally used not only kind of like a chisel but also as a scribe. So they have a lot of different uses, but if you're not a woodworker, I mean, I don't do all that much woodworking myself, but we use these things all the time in the shop, cleaning up glue lines, scraping off little bits of material, using them as scribes as they're traditionally intended for. This design is something that I came up with a long, long time ago. I think I was 16 or 17 when I first did one like this, and I've been a huge fan of the design ever since then. For now, we're gonna get going on getting this thing cleaned up. This started off as a laser cut blank of AEBL stainless steel. Then we had them professionally heat treated to 63 Rockwell, so they're gonna hold a wicked good edge, but there's a lot of cleanup and handwork that needs to go into getting them ready to actually be a usable knife. So after we get the laser marks ground out of the spine, then we need to go back in and chamfer the edges so that it's nice and comfortable to hold. This takes a little while because we're doing it on the belt grinder. I am gonna go back and clean it up with hand sanding, but I want these lines to be as crisp and as uniform as possible. So with the chamfers and the flats cleaned up and looking good, it's now time to go in and grind the bevel. Now I set up the Charlie Ellis bevel jig to the correct angle to make this process really simple because we're grinding a lot of these things. And while I could do it by hand, it just goes a lot faster to have that reference point of the flat surface to be able to grind a bevel easily. We're gonna take this whole thing up to 600 grit so that it makes the hand sanding process a little bit easier. All right, we are off the grinder, 600 grit all the way around. The flats have been disc sanded. I'm gonna start sanding at 1,000 grit and just get as far as I can. Uh, if I need to go back down to get out some deeper scratches that I couldn't really see from the belt grinding process, I will. But I'm gonna start off with the bevel at 1,000. Uh, we are gonna go, I think, all the way up to 2,000 just because that will make the whole polishing easier. I wanna bring this thing up to a full mirror before we uh, gold plate it. I just think that's gonna look really cool. Couple of slightly deeper scratches, but I think that thousand grit will take care of them. It's kinda always how it goes, especially when you're grinding a bevel like this where there's not really a whole lot of opportunity to change the angle. That's usually how I make sure that I've gotten out my deeper scratches is I'll like, I'll go from straight like this to like that or like that and that just allows you to see that you've removed all of the scratches. I've used the same philosophy for hand sanding. I just, I changed my angle to make sure that I've gotten through. All right, we got it hand sanded up to 2,000 grit, which means that it's now time to buff it. But before we do that, it's probably a good idea to put a maker's mark on it, you know. <laughs> People know who made it. So we're gonna get that taken care of, and then we're gonna come back tomorrow morning, buff it out, and then gold plate this little son of a gun. Okay, so there was a couple of deeper scratches in there that I'm not entirely thrilled about. So I'm gonna go back to 2000 grit, make sure this stuff is clean and uh, try and get those fellers out. I couldn't really see them at 2000. So this finish, this mirror scratches so easy. Wiping it down with a microfiber cloth scratched it. We're gonna have to be very careful about that. There was a little spot near the finger choil here that I think might've still had some lower grit scratches in it. It didn't quite get as shiny as the rest of it. First things first is I'm gonna degrease it before I start the gold plating process. It would be better if I had like a dipping 
plater, but I don't, I just have a pen plater. But what that will allow me to do is basically draw all over it an electroplate 24 karat gold onto the Kiridashi. It's been like a year or two since I've done any gold plating, but we'll see how it goes. This is the solution, 24 karat gold. And since you don't want to recontaminate your stuff, pour it into this little dish right here. Get this thing saturated pretty good. Let's start on the bevel. Okay, I've been a little bit more happy with other finishes on anything else ever that I've ever made. Uh, so I'm gonna see if buffing this will clean it up a little bit or if it just looks really bad. And if it looks really bad, then we're just gonna go back to a satin finish or maybe try like a bead blast or something like that. That looks terrible. It stripped it off in like a clumpy way. I just don't think that it's hanging on to that mirrored finish very well. Uh, I have a couple of bead blasted ones. I'm gonna do a quick test spot on one and see if we like it. Oh, you know what? It's not working at all. I know that with certain aluminum oxide finishes, it can keep things from being, like titanium, from being anodized. I wonder if it's leaving a finish on there that prevents surface contact or something. Yeah, that's not picking it up at all. I'm just gonna try roughing it up a little bit with some like scotch bright or something. I'm gonna try this kind of unidirectional finish. It seems like maybe that'll help the gold hang on a little better. Oh yeah. All right, well, time to rough up this whole thing. I have never been so disappointed to be successful at something in my life. All right, I had it all done. It was totally covered in gold and then I wiped it with a cloth and from there to there came off. I'm gonna rough it up a little bit more and try it again. Okay, so I did a little bit of Googling. It turns out you need a little bit of nickel plating solution before you do gold plating on certain alloys of stainless steel. The stainless steel that I plated before was 410 stainless steel and it plated perfectly. So I assumed naturally that it would be just fine, but your boy was wrong. So I just ordered some nickel plating solution and spent $100 to overnight it here, but we're past the deadline. So it won't be here tomorrow. It'll be here later, very unfortunate, but we'll pick back up trying to nickel plate uh, before we do our gold plating. So I'll see you guys in the future. While we're waiting for the nickel plating solution to show up, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, which is Thrive Market. Thrive Market, I love. I'm very excited that they're sponsoring the channel. Matt and his wife order all kinds of stuff from them all the time. And so Matt's wife was very excited when Thrive Market started sponsoring the channel. Basically what Thrive Market does is they bring you healthy foods at a much lower cost because they're not selling out of a physical store, so they don't have the retail expenses. They also give you an ease of mind that you don't get with retail shopping because they filter out over a thousand questionable ingredients so that everything that they're selling on their site is already good to go. You know that you're not getting poisoned by absolute junk, which is something that you can't say without reading the entire ingredient list on everything that you buy at the store. These right here, these little healthy Pringles from the Good Crisp Company are an absolute shop favorite here. This last Thrive Market order that we got, I got four cases of these and they're just fantastic. It's the perfect little workshop snack. They taste like Pringles, uh, but they're not gonna kill you or wreck your brain, which is good. It's super convenient to get healthy food delivered right to your door, whether that's snacks, drinks, meat, all sorts of awesome stuff they have available on there. Uh, it's actually been super nice having those snacks at the shop, because otherwise I need to go out to the store, figure out what I wanna get. Quite frankly, I'm a little bit too like all over the place to do that consistently. Uh, but having good, nutritious snacks in the shop is fantastic. I don't know if these count as nutritious contains milk. Milk's good for you. Their site is super easy to use. I very highly recommend checking them out. If you're conscious about what you eat, you don't wanna be eating toxic ingredients, which American food is just full of, and if you like saving money. 
Those are the two biggest things, in my opinion, why I like Thrive Market. They do all sorts of other fantastic things, but those are the two top reasons for me personally that I enjoy it. So if you wanna check out Thrive Market, you can click the link in the description, or you can go to thrivemarket.com slash willstelter to receive 30% off your first order and a free gift when you join Thrive Market today. Thank you, Thrive Market, so much for sponsoring this episode. With that, let's teleport into the future and get back to work. Welcome to the future. It's currently four days in the future, depending on how you count your time. Uh, we left off on a Thursday afternoon. It is now Monday afternoon. You see this tag right here, next day air. One would expect that when purchasing an item and having it shipped via next day air from Northern Utah to Southern Montana, pretty close together, about an hour and a half flight, then an item would perhaps show up within the next day or so. They would be wrong. In the meantime, Yesterday, we dropped the Kiridashis, the stainless Kiridashis, and they're doing surprisingly well. Uh, we always do a video accompanying a drop. This is the first time that we're trying doing it without it, and uh, they're selling well. Uh, and if you're watching it right now, as the video is dropping, there are still some available on the website. Not a ton, we've sold most of them, which is great, uh, but you know, now's the time to hop on if you want a chance to win the golden Kiridashi. How do I open this? That's electrical tape. They really did not want this spilling. Wear protective gloves, clothing, eye, and face protection. <laughs> I'm not gonna do all that, but we'll try gloves. And we have two pens here now, and hopefully they both work. Uh, I did re-clean off the Kiridashi with some thousand grit, so it is ready for the nickel plating solution. We are gonna degrease it again for the one bajillionth time. All right, get the last couple little scratches out and then we'll get going on our nickel plating. Wow, that stuff does not smell good. We're gonna try the nickel plating first. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see it. That would be a no. And now we're gonna switch pens. Let's see if they come out with gold plating or if it stays looking gross. Well, it's working kind of. Boy, that looks bad. Oh, I can't handle another defeat. And it's wiping off. Really what we need is a bat, like a plating bath. That might be worth giving it a shot. Thing is we couldn't do that with the gold. We'd have to go back to pen plating for the gold. But if the nickel goes on smooth, then it would be okay. All right, I'm thinking that we should maybe try a bath with the nickel solution. I think that's gonna be the only way that we're gonna be able to get like a really consistent base layer. So it's probably worth just giving it a shot. Okay, we found a small dish that a kiridashi will lay flat in. Guys, I think this might work. I hate wearing rubber gloves with my whole soul. After properly cleaning the surface to be plated, immerse in the solution, adjust the voltage until light gassing evolves from the treated surface. Avoid touching activated surface and plate immediately after proper rinsing. Avoid touching. That's gonna be a rough one. Oh, we're getting light gassing. You don't wanna see those fingerprints though, do you? That's probably bad. Now we can crank up the voltage. Oh, it's maxing out the voltage on this thing at like four volts. It said four to seven volts. Bath time, activate for 20 to 30 seconds. I don't know guys, it might've worked. I'm gonna try doing it while there's water on there. It's going on. It's not gonna stick. The pen is wiping it off. You have to, this is some sort of sick joke. Oh. Mostly, uh, okay, I think we need to do more nickel plating. The tip got dark. See, the tip got a little darker than the rest of it. I don't know why that is. That's going on pretty good, it looks like to me. It's coming off. Yeah, it came off. I wiped it and it all came off. It definitely looks plated now, but it just doesn't look consistent. Yeah, that looks awful. Definitely plated it, that's for sure. Total color change, but it's splotchy. We're gonna try it anyway. That doesn't even look like the right color. Yeah, it's like green. It looks moldy. And it's still wiped off. Ugh! Okay, new plan. We're ditching the stainless one, because that's gonna make me quit everything. Uh, and we're gonna use this lovely fully handmade Damascus one instead. Uh, now it has a high contrast etch on it right now, but I think I'd like to buff it out completely so it's shiny and then gold plate it. So you'll still get the texture of the Damascus, but it'll be fully gold. So let's hop on into the grinding room and get this thing buffed out and then 
plate it up because I think it's going to go well. It went just fine on the other one that I tried. Maybe not. Okay, so when I started buffing it, uh, it really brought out some of the grit lines in this, which looks totally fine when it's etched, but if it's gonna be polished, it needs to go up to a higher grit. And it's 82 degrees in the shop right now, so I'm gonna hand sand it here in the office up to at least 400. I'll probably go over it with some thousand to try and even it up a little bit. Uh, and then we'll go back and polish, etch and then polish it again. But uh, I'm gonna sit in the air conditioned office and get this taken care of. All right, it's hand sanded up. I'm gonna buff it and then we're gonna throw it into some Baker Forge Gator Piss. All right, into a little Gator Piss. I'll let that etch for about half an hour. So after five rounds of etching, buffing, cleaning, the Damascus pattern is really starting to get topographical. That means that the nickel layer is standing out above the 1080 layer, which is exactly what we want for doing this gold plating. And so with it fully cleaned off, it's time to start gold plating it. The 24 karat gold is going on so smoothly. The color is even, it's not coming off. It's exactly what I wanted. This is exactly what I thought was gonna happen with the stainless steel, and then it did not do that. It took about 45 minutes all in all to get the whole thing gold plated. I had to go back and wipe off the solution. I noticed that on the stainless one, if the solution was left on for too long, it would turn funny colors and do all sorts of weird stuff. So I was just paying attention to that, making sure that there wasn't just a loose solution sitting on the face of it. With the gold plating completely done, I washed it off, neutralized it, had to go back and retouch up a couple areas, and then it was totally done for real, and it was time to sharpen it. Put some thousand grit on the disc sander so I can get a perfectly flat edge. So I had a light burr on the flat side and then stropped it. After that, I did retouch up the gold plating because the stropping uh, took off a little bit of it, but I actually left the edge nice and gold, which I don't think will affect the cutting performance at all because it's such a thin layer, only a couple of microns. And I think it looks a lot better to have the whole thing be blinged out. And with that, it was done. Well, this thing turned out absolutely ridiculous. I really love that with the deep etched Damascus polished out, it still has the chatoyant, so when, when light plays off of it, it catches it kind of like a curly wood. I just think that's really neat that that effect stayed there while it's covered in 24 karat gold. And if you wanna be able to see this in person, the only way that you can do that is by going onto Stelter Manufacturing, purchasing a stainless kiridashi of any variety. We've got four different options. We've got uh, rock pattern and satin spines, right and left hand grinds. Having both really allows you to get into like different little nooks and crannies and stuff like that because it only compresses the fibers of the material that you're cutting on one side. Uh, it means that you can do very precise cutting tasks with them. Either of them are handy by themselves, but having a pair really opens up the possibilities. We still have a decent bit of them left on the website. A little more than half of them are gone, but there's still a chance to get in on the opportunity to win this guy as well. On top of that, we also have a couple of megaliths left on the website, both in hex stock and the square ones. These guys are six pounds a piece and they are super cool. Uh, they really, they, they put a smile on your face when you hang on to them. They're a lot of fun. Part of the reason for making this video, is just show the process that we go through in making a kiridashi, obviously, a little bit different when it's plated in 24 karat gold, which turned out to be so, so much harder than I thought it was gonna be. What I really took away from this whole process is that I'm not going to try and plate AEPL with gold ever again, because that was terrible. Generally, pretty cool, calm, collected person. It takes a lot to make me frustrated. I don't really oftentimes get surprised by things. Uh, usually, uh, you know, working in a physical workshop, things are logical and they make sense and they're consistent. Uh, if you're trying to do a process and something's not working, you can change a variable and get a different result. Having that not happen, trying to plate the stainless kiridashi, got me a little fired up. Ask Isaiah. But at the end of the day, honestly, doing a gold Damascus one is probably way cooler anyway, so um, it's a win. If the inventor of AEBL is still alive, watch your back. He's dead. AEBL's been around for like 100 years, so. <laughs> so with that, make sure to go check out Stelter Manufacturing. Thank you so much to Thrive Market for sponsoring today's episode, keeping us all snack, snacked up. That's not a word. And to our patrons for patronizing us. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.